And we're live. And we're live. And we are live. All right. Aspirin Odetta, thank you for being the first one in this morning. Shout out to the people going out to work this morning. Shout out to the people coming in from work this morning. Extra special big up shout out to the people who work multiple jobs. I have the utmost respect for you. Shout out to my entrepreneurs, my stay-at-home moms, pops, my retirees. Shout out to the drivers. Shout out to the Uber driver, Lyft driver, truck driver, taxi driver, food delivery drivers, round town and long distance truck drivers. Shout out to the crossing guards, the school teachers. Shout out to the law enforcement personnel, medical field personnel, military personnel. Shout out to the heavy equipment operators, construction workers, the AC techs. Shout out to the security guard. Shout out to whatever your job description is. If you're up and out to get it in an honest way, the chefs in the kitchens, shout out to the secretaries in the offices, shout out to whatever it is you do, shout out to you. Shout out to every single clean-hearted, good-hearted person who wants good for others as much as you want good for yourself. You're a good person if that is who you are. Don't let that go over your head. Morning, Elaine Brown. Thank you for being here, family. And shout out to everybody else tuning in. The tuning looked different this morning than it does yesterday or the day before yesterday. So I don't know. I guess YouTube is working on fixing itself and it, it looks better. All right. Big up to whoever is here this morning. Veronica Gale, Donna Davis, Missy Brom Brom, Michelle Taylor, Onika St. John, Nikita Jones is in the building. Karen Notice, Banches is here. Elaine Brown says, morning, uncle. Pussy galore is in the, <laughs> Pussy galore is in the building. Somebody said, Soflo. Um, when last, I mean, I hear your show told Pussy Galore in a long time. You know, Pussy Galore, the name makes me laugh because me hear Pussy Galore, I think of a Galore amount of pussy. <laughs> Anyhow, um, Pussy Galore, big up yourself. Thank you for being here. Virtuous Fire is in the building. Rosalie Fair is in the building. Thank you for being a part of this, Rosalie Fair. <laughs> Wayne Nathan is in the building this morning. Crystal G, big up yourself. Thank you for being here as well. Sandra Quelo is in the building. Haven't seen that name in a while. I hope all is well with you, family. And let me see. I hope I didn't forget anybody because Asarin Odetta was the first one in. And Mr. Article Dunn and Audrey Wright were right there with Miss Goldie Robinson. Miss Goldie Robinson, big up yourself as well. And thank you, Marcia Walters and Virtuous Fire Senior Section Sharon Spence. Yes, I did forget a lot of people or skip. Jamaica from the outside. Jamaica from the outside. Shout out to my... Um, everybody tunes into my content. You can go check out Jamaica from the outside. I was very, uh, I love, I love seeing different types of content that comes from us. What, sh what wasn't shocking, but Jamaica from the outside had something where a person like me who was in the state of Florida, I could reach out and connect to people who have like a goat farm. So if I want curry goat, you know, I'm going to get goat meat fresh from the farm. They actually pick the goat. And they do the killing, cleaning, and all these. We don't want to use the word killing. They do the preparation of the meat straight from the farm and these kind of things. And then there was a farm that had every kind of fruit and mango you could think of and all these things. Just go over to Jamaica from the Outside YouTube channel and you will see what I'm talking about. Jamaica from the Outside, I thank you for being here this morning as well. I'm looking for Lovely Aneka. Lovely Aneka is another one who um, we ask to support her content as well, right? Uh, I'm always here, so just get in late, Sandra Quello says. All right, friend. Um, appreciate you being here. All right, love it. Here we go. This is what we have on the table this morning. A couple of things. Uh, why? Every time I do this type of topic right here. Where's my other phone? This not look good. Okay, here it is. Every time I do this type of topic right here, you know what? We don't care. I'm going right in. Modern woman mentality is one we're going to talk about this morning. Um, there was a list of things that women expect, modern women expect from men, and it's a requirement. And the list has gone viral. I didn't make the list go viral. I just saw the list uh, last night, and I saved it, and it had like over 20,000 comments 20,000 comments. Y'all watch videos. Y'all see comments. It's hard to get 20,000 comments on a video unless the video is really, really trending. So apparently a lot of people are into what was said here, right? Um, this is a list of things that women request or re re require 
in modern times. <laughs> and I think we could have a whole big conversation around this, which will lead into a teacher being caught in the backseat of a car naked with a student and all that happened after and who her husband is. That's another story we're going to talk about this morning. Um, there's some Airbnb safety tips, which I will get off my chest first because I tried to do it yesterday, but for some reason I forgot about it. The Vibes Cartel retrial or freedom walk is has been given a date. It'll be June 10th to June 15th where we will know for sure what goes on there. There are some misconceptions there that I think I have to clear up for people so everybody has a clear understanding of what's going to happen there. Um, and there was a police officer that was gunned down yesterday evening in St. Anne, and we'll talk briefly about him as well, the situation that took place, and send out our condolences. And then there is a story called Unforgettable Love, and the story is about dementia and a... Uh, couple in jamaica who is going through that part of life which of course we will turn into a moment of learning as well right so that's where we're at with this this morning let me start off with the usually i'll ask you to where do i start off but i, I have to start off with the airbnb this morning because i should have done it yesterday so a situation happened where uh a young man took his family to Florida, I believe they were from California, I took the family to Florida, wife and two kids, and they came to Florida for a vacation, right? And they set out their Airbnb, everything is mapped out. He thought he was going to a very nice place because the pictures on the Airbnb pictures uh, looked very beautiful. The palm trees, the big pool close to the beach, all this stuff. And he came and with uh, by the second day he was in Florida, he was dead. He was dead because somebody tried to take the car that he was driving and they shot him in his rib cage and he didn't survive it. He passed away. So, of course, a uh, family dream vacation turns into horror and nightmare. And then the wife has to go back home with the two kids and no dad because dad is now in a morgue. OK, I'm a person that uses Airbnb quite frequently, right? But there are ways to use Airbnb. So I'm going to share this with you. If it's not a super host, I never use it. So if you're going to use an Airbnb from me to you personally, I would tell you to always make sure that you are using a super host. Airbnb is really good. Airbnb is really good because, for, for instance, if I'm taking my family on the road, right, and I have to go to, say, uh, I, I'm going to need two hotel rooms because I'm taking everybody, right? And then I'm going to need hotel rooms that join so I can walk right into their other side because we have teenagers. You don't know what the hell they over there doing. And I have small kids. You don't want them to be playing in the side with their and then drop off of some 10-story high balcony or anything like that. So I'm very concerned about safety and these other things, locations and whatever. A hotel would end up costing double the price of what a whole house with multiple rooms and multiple bathrooms will cost. So Airbnb is very cost effective. Airbnbs are also sometimes in dangerous areas. That wife with those two children, she sued that uh, company, the, the, the people. She sued because the Airbnb that they got, it was a company that owns those apartments and was renting them out as Airbnbs. So they sued the company and they I think they ended up walking away with a two million dollar judgment, two million US dollars judgment, right? Um, because for one, the complex that the apart that the condo that they rented was in, other people had been robbed in it recently, in days recently leading up to what happened to this man and his family. Not only that, the police record shows that in the past couple of weeks leading up to that incident, police had been called multiple times to that complex because criminals were gaining access and they were targeting the people inside of that complex. That's your nightmare. That's your worst nightmare. I would hate to go anywhere on vacation. Could you imagine you end up in Jamaica 
and then them have gunmen that jump the wall of some place that you thought was safe and secured because it has 24 hour security guard at the gate and all this. And next thing you know, a gunman knocking at your window with gun in hand and these kind of things or attacking you in the parking lot. That could be very friggin' scary anywhere you go, whether it's Florida or Jamaica. Let me reiterate, this particular incident happened in Florida, not in Jamaica. So I'm not blaming Jamaica for anything, but it's same all around. Super host. So if you're going to use an Airbnb, member says SoFlow TV told you, go with a super host. Airbnb on the site is listed regular listings and then your choice to go with a super host a super host might cost a little bit more but for your safety and your security super host is the way to go the reason why they are known as super host is because they've been doing it for a while they've been vetted they have no complaints they're known to be people who are very responsive and very responsible they're easy to get to they'll be there for you and people who get with them and use their facilities normally enjoy it and normally return to use it again so it is usually those who are able to keep their people safe right so safety is a huge deal for me kamiparo in our real life so super host is what it is um audrey wright says i've yet to use an airbnb Nikita Jones says, BS, if you can provide these things for yourself, don't expect that a man have or must provide these things. Oh, we're about to get into that list right now. So please, for those of you who do travel, write that down because I know sometimes you forget. Just remember the word super host. And yes, Airbnb is nice to use. Super host. One more time. Super host. All right. Now. Let's get into, since you're already talking about it, Nikita Jones, let's get, let's get into this list. This, this, um, and I think I might even share some personal stuff this morning. Uh, some people might end up bex and these things, but I just saw life go. Anyhow, a list of things that women expect from a man and the list has gone viral. It's right here, right? I want you to listen to this list first and then we are going to talk. Number one, he must pay all the bills. That's number one. <laughs> number two, he must take care of the kid of my kids. Right? Not our kids. He must take care of my kids. Number three, he must cook and he must clean. Number four, it's 10 things on this list. I'm at number four. Number four, he must let me cheat in peace. Right. Is this even real? Let me cheat in peace. Number five, buy me a house and a car in my name only. Number six, STFU and do what I say. STFU, for those of you who don't use profanity or know what it means, it means shut the fuck up and do what I say. Number seven, he must give me a body massage daily. Every day, it says. <laughs> Number eight, he must give me sex, but only when I'm in the mood for it. Not when he's in the mood for it. Only when I'm in the mood for it. Number, that's number eight. Number nine, he must be faithful to me no matter what I do. And number 10 is he must marry me. And he must marry me within a certain period of time. <laughs> ah this um at, okay so at first right at first you look at this and you think it's a joke because it is a joke but it's not a joke it's actually a real list that real women are actually <laughs> are actually saying that this is this is the standard right if you want to cheat okay number one pay all the bills i see all the women under here saying most of them saying that's exactly what a man should do is pay all the bills, right? I'm not paying no bills with no man. If I have to pay bills with a man or if I have to go 50-50, I'd rather go 100 by myself. So if I have a man, he must pay all the bills. Or I'm finding myself by myself where I can pay my own bills by myself. That's the stupidest logic I've ever heard. You know why? Because, may I break down all of these? The stupidest logic I've ever heard. Because, look, 
if you're with somebody, right, and you're going 50-50, for one, it shows how invested you are in that relationship and that you're not just there to uh, take, 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 and not give. Now, if a man says to you, uh, babe, I don't want you paying the bills. I got this, right? Then that's a whole different story. But it shouldn't be a requirement. You understand? Now, if you refuse to go 50-50, and you would rather go 100 by yourself. So let's do a quick math right here. Say you have a condo. Your condo is $2,000 a month. If you're going 50-50 with this man who you so are in love with that you have a relationship with him. And you're going half and half 50-50. You're, you're saving $1,000 a month, right? So <laughs> you would rather pay $1,000 a month just on that. Just so you could pay your own bill. Because... Hold on. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Quick funny topic there. Quick funny topic there. All right. Talk up yeah. now. So, you know, me just never understand the whole thing there. What that? Woman uh, said them now go 50-50 or whatever. Mm -hmm. But when you had divorce, you want to let me 50. <laughs> you ever <laughs> understand that? When you had, when you had divorced, they want to left with 50. They want to leave it 50. But the, the they relationship, they're not going 50. They said they're not going 50-50. No, they're supposed to stay home and be also. I know me understand the world stress most women. Me I talk about a partner like, in a minute. Well, yeah, yeah. Would like, you know, somebody who can make them feel secure in terms of financial wise and so on. But sometimes, even if the person I give you a certain amount of money, I said, one month, you must can say, please, I got the bill this month. Something. Yeah. The person just appear, 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 sir. No, sir. Me not believe in that one. Day. Yeah. Me not believe in that one. Day. You can help to sometimes. Me uh, not say, you think, go work, go kin out, broke your back and everything. And then when you come out, you know, your man will just want to jump in and you when you have to take care of the house, take care of picking them. Right. Make sure all house clean and all of them things. Me understand that. Right. But. I don't know where the woman you get this thing. I internet, you know. I guarantee you Facebook or Instagram gone and them thing there. I want to show you said the world, the world would have been better. Yeah, yeah. I world this world Kim Kardashian and then woman there in America I mash up everybody at the top of oh, I ain't gonna do that. He got it. All of them something there. Make it to own the money merch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A woman wanna keep for them money and still want to take fear. I still want you pay everything. I think that is when a woman I think that is when a woman don't care about you. Yeah. I think that is when a woman don't care about you and she don't see you in her long term plan. I think that is when you are a stepping stone. But may I talk about that in a minute. So all right. Yeah. All right. So look. So we ain't even gonna do the math, right? You choose to go off and you would rather I would rather pay all my bills by my damn self than be with a man who I have to split 50-50 with. This is modern woman mentality, right? Um, not only must he pay all the bills, he must take care of the kids, whether they are his kids or my kids alone that I brought into this relationship with him or our kids that we have together. He must cook and he must clean and he must do all these other things. So here we have a man, right? That must be a super friggin' man because nowadays bills are high as hell and people have to work extra hard to catch up and keep up with these bills, let alone to have a little something left to give you the life you desire. Because I'm sure you want to pack your bags and go somewhere at least once a year, go vacation somewhere. Who's going to pay for that too? Him? The same man who, so he's probably working um, 12, 14, 15 hour days. Right, you know what that does to the body. It's only twenty four hours in a day. The Monday I walk himself into sickness. He's not getting any rest. But you don't care that about him, right? When you have exhausted all that you can get from him, you will just find a next cluffy. I mean, a next man to move on to. Correct? Right. So here we are. He must cook. He must clean. He must pay all the bills. He must buy me a house and a car in my name only. That is her security, right? Because it's in my name, so I don't give a damn what you do. You can't take it back, and you can't say, don't touch this, and you can't say, pack your stuff and leave, and whatever. By the way, that's one of my rules, right? I tell every man this. Try to find a way to secure some of your stuff and keep some of your stuff in your name. I don't give a damn even if you are married, because things look salty nowadays. And even if you are married to a... You, you have to be married to one of them women that are not thinking like this. 
but most of them today are thinking like this, right? They're thinking about the end. Even when the relationship just start, they're already planning the end of it. Well, just in case, you know, it's like if you say both went into the hundred meter race thinking, well, I might lose this race, but I could try to pull up hard upon the corner and see what we can do. No, nah, he goes in thinking, this is my race. I go win that race here. And I'm putting everything into it. I'm leaving it all on the track. That's what you need. You need somebody in a relationship who has said, this is my relationship and me. I go all out with this. I'm leaving everything in it, right? Not somebody who is planning the end while they're at the beginning of it. Well, I have them like a just in case list, right? So that's where we're at today. Um, sex me only when I'm in the mood, not when he's in the mood. Be faithful to me no matter what I do. And then marry me. What I've learned is that modern women, they want to be under the covering of a man, a man-man, a man that protects, a man that provides, a man that is a man. They want to be under the covering of a real man, right? But they don't see that the man deserves respect. Like if a man actually does all this for you, pay all the bills, takes care of the children, clean house, fix this, do all the stuff that you don't even do. Cause you're not going outside, go push no lawn more. You're not going outside, go use the big scissors, cut down all the overgrown shrubbery and all these things. You're not changing no tire or paying for them to get done servicing of the vehicles, change aisle and all these things. You're not cleaning the vehicle. Them. You're not doing none of that stuff. So the man does all these things, right? And this, this, this is the type of man that they talk to crazy, right? So he is supposed to do all these things, but he doesn't deserve respect. Just respect. And there are men out there who do all these things. And all the man asks in return is for some respect. But he's the one who gets talked to crazy. Well, F you. And, nigga. Call, call the man all kind of name, bitch, that, hoe, that, this, that. Talk to him how she please. See, the women from the time gone by, they had it like that. The ones who didn't have to worry about bills. Remember I told you I grew up under my grandparents. Miss Ruby up there, so I grew up under my grandparents, right? One thing I know is my grandfather took care of everything. That didn't stop Miss Ruby from working. And it didn't stop Miss Ruby from contributing either, right? But Miss Ruby knew her place. And if you say no our place today, oh, what do you mean, no my place? Well, okay, I guess I'm supposed to be in the kitchen barefooted with pregnant with 10 kids under me. You know, them get uh triggered when you say know your place. The man has a place in the relationship, the woman has a place in the relationship and a role also, right? Some roles blend. And some roles are just your friggin' role as a man. I know if you hear somebody kick the front door in the wee hours of the morning, 2 a.m. when we're sleeping, I know you're not pulling me behind you and talking about, I got this babe, which part of the gun, I'm going to go out there and say, I hold that, I hold kick off the front door. No, you're going to hide behind me. I'm going to have to go risk my life out there, right? I'm going to have to go protect us. See, so there are roles that, are for men and roles that are for women if you have a man i believe that if you have a man that does all these things which some of them are even off the friggin wall but if you have a man where do all these the, at least those women they knew that respect was the biggest thing and respect came with everything else she was able to get and shutting her mouth sometimes and being a woman, being feminine in his presence is what got her deserving of the life that she had. You understand? Nowadays, it's not like that anymore. I talk to a ninja how I feel like it. Ain't nobody could tell me what to say. Imagine you instructing a woman on how you want your house to be ran. On how you want your ch children to be taken care of. And you can't do it. Can't you? She can't, you can't tell me nothing. Can't. Let's take this call. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Good morning. What, what, what are you on this morning? What am I on? Yes. If you're asking you me what I'm on, that means you're not listening. 
I'm listening, I'm listening. So why are you asking me where I am? You see, you see you, you just get more upset, and then at the end of the show, I'm like, oh my God, I love him. <laughs> <laughs> You're defensive. <laughs> you, like most women but, are defensive. You know, you know when you tell so the truth. Think about it this way. Uh -huh. Think about it. She gonna bring out okay, my Trini I'm accent now. I'm listening to the letter. Yeah, say you gonna bring out my Trini accent now. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to the list, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. That list is somebody or woman who basically uh they 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 the the opportunistic. Oh God, you call in. She just end the call. So call back now. You call back, call back. A lot of women are triggered because this is exactly what they do behind closed doors. Live on the air with SoFlo. Sorry, my phone, my, my call dropped. Sorry. All right. Talk now. Yeah. These women are opportunistic. Mm -hmm. They're taking advantage. Yeah. But, but, you, talk, you just spoke about women hiding behind their husband. Mm -hmm. That's not my personality. That's what you're doing? My, my, you're not running out there? Funny, as soon as I, I, I have a gun mm -hmm. or a crooked bat. Mm-hmm. He could lie down there, it's, it's fine by me, and I don't have balls or penis. Okay, so you out in the street, you walk in with your husband, and a man... I don't have no husband to defend me. That's I why, you, that's no why you're talking me. like that. Daddy, that is... <laughs> daddy died when I was is, six years old. That, to protect mommy. That is why you're talking like that. So I you, have to protect myself. Well, you're a different person. This don't apply to you. This don't apply okay, to you. And then do I live in New York? You can't be timid. Yeah, but this don't apply to you. This is a conversation about relationship between man and woman. I know if me and my woman walking down the street and a guy come up to try to attack us, she does not expect for me That's to jump true. behind her and true. she go fight the man. That's you understand? Two so That's ego. And that's you being in love with your wife and love your wife and want to protect your family. No, it's not ego. It's trying to defend, period. Because that's the first thing that happens. You didn't plan that. Ego would be you stroking yourself. Oh, I'm going to look a fight with this person. Come and me can fight him. And what the boy just said to me, when you could have walked away. That's ego. Uh -huh. Somebody uh -huh. attacking you on the street, your, your ego didn't have time to come into play. You are being attacked right now. Your flight or fight has kicked in. Who is going to defend who? Am I going to... Self-preservation. I get it. Right. But am I going to run and leave my wife standing there and say she must fight? Am I going to jump behind her and push her up front? You fight in beams. Um, is, is that how it goes? Or am I expected as the man... Exactly. Am I expected as the man to be the one up front handling the situation? That is societal pressures. No, that's being under the covering of a man because that is what a man is supposed to do. It's not no societal so pressure. Nothing, that's so what, that's that what, nobody's supposed to do. No, lady, that's why you probably don't have no man. What, what do you mean? Oh, that, God, that, oh, <laughs> I don't want no more. No, no, you have plenty. I see, that's the thing about some of you women. I you could good. get plenty, man, but where is the good alpha man that you I can keep? I for you, as long as I have my money and I can pay my bill, she are one of them. I could take care of the house in Trinidad. Yeah, use one. Buy a house in Grenada. That don't mean nothing to nobody. Up, up, as the Jamaicans that say, up, 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 up. <laughs> I good. I, I, me I cut off the conversation here. Uh, um, yeah, you, you go enjoy your house and, <laughs> and all that. Let me, let me go back to this. So, Topic. You can't be like that. Let me go back to this topic. <laughs> One more thing I want to say before you cut more. Uh huh. Cause I cut it you off. About, it's not about role. Uh -huh. It's about team. Okay. You get it done. I get it done. And you over there is a whole team by yourself. And and so what? I was in team membership, whatever, and we're still friends today, great friends, but the relationship didn't work out. There so is what? no I in team. 
it's just it is, let me leave you know, alone. Let me leave you alone. Make, and that's the thing. You cannot make a goal for you what you choose to let them do. All right, let me leave you alone because I know where this is going Stop and me and so you are <laughs> you're being biased, man. All right. Uh, power woman, you have daughters. All right. Okay. Later. <laughs> Later. <laughs> You see, anytime you start to, you know what's sad? What's sad is that there are older women who have that same mind frame. You would think by the time you reach certain age, certain things stick to you. Like I said to y'all before, right? I have this, uh, I knew this lady. I don't want to call any names because I noticed that she stopped talking to me after I said it. But she probably watched and knows that she I was talking about. So we having a conversation and she's like in her 40s. And I said, and she said, no. Hood size still matter to me and whole heap of stamina and him have to can beat it up like this and the thing have to hang like that. And I, I said, I said to I said to her, I said, listen, you 40 something years old, right? You're probably not gonna get another 40 years on earth. The average person passes away around 70, 75, and that's if you live long. So the people that want to see I make it to 90 and live something there, them are outlive and they are not normal. Okay, the average out of the majority makes it to about 75. So you already hit 40, 45, mid-age, them age there. You still thinking about cocky size and distance and stamina at that age? You should be thinking about companionship. At that age, you should be thinking about, like my grandmother and my grandfather. I used to see my grandmother's arthritis kick up and her leg would start to cramp, right? And she would be like, ah, oh, and she beating her leg like, ah, oh, ah, oh, like that. Watch my grandfather. My grandfather jump up and him grab the bottle of beer rum and him run over there, you know, and him sap up Miss Ruby leg for her and him massage up her leg. For you better hope you have somebody like that. You know, they are talk about as long as I can pay for the house in Trinidad and the house in Jamaica. You're soon dead left that as somebody else who don't even like you are going to live in that. So don't worry about all that. Worry about the quality of life you're able to live while you're here. Don't nobody care, especially real men who are go-getters, who wake up when you sleeping to go get it and are guaranteed to get it and have it, we don't give a damn about how much you can get as a woman. We don't care about no house. We don't care about your career. We don't care about your title on the job. We don't. What, what does that do for us? We're not looking nothing from you. So what does that do for us? Is women care about those things for men because they look in something from a man. So she's like, no, I'm not no garbage truck worker. I'm mean, not no sanitation worker. I want a lawyer. I wanted this, I wanted that, because she had looked for people who make whole heap of money, because in her mind, that whole heap of money translates into a certain type of lifestyle for her. A man could take up a girl that flip burgers at Burger King, and if she has the right attitude, and it comes with love, and it comes with respect, and it comes with her doing everything from a genuine place, from a genuine place of uplifting this union, she could be the queen of the house. Then he'll go get it and make sure that she have it. You know what I mean? Some man don't really care about them something there. And the boy, them who are trying to look some pum pum from you and make get some money off of you or something, care about all that. A man who's trying to build with you don't really care about all that. And a man who's trying to build with you will even facilitate you and lift you into the position that you desire to be in. You know what I mean? He's not going to kill your dreams and stifle your dreams to make his dreams rise. He wants to see you rise too if you have dreams. So whether you want to be something outside of the home or your dream and your goal is just to be a housewife, he could facilitate both, right? But what I'm saying is modern day women forget that respect comes with a man who is able to provide these types of things for a woman. Hold on there. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Good morning. Three floor. Three floor. It's one floor. Family, floor. Your, your, your phone is yeah. not clear. Your phone. Uh, we are on a, ro uh, we are on a uh, roll right now and your phone is not clear. As a businessman. Yeah, hear me now? Do you have a son speaker? Me as I read Do you have a son speaker, brother? I'm a business man. We are doing my business and all these things. Tell me the truth, bro. Stop, bro. I love you, I love the whole family. 
But as a businessman, tell the truth. We can disclose everything. Disclose everything to who? You can't disclose me. I'm just a businessman. Yeah? Huh? A truth so low, you have the address low, and you have the best show. Love you, and no people don't know. And the best TV, a slow flow TV. All right, yeah. brother. Manners and respect. All right, big up yourself. I make sure I'm not answer that number there again for quite a while. So I can't keep on going. Come here, tell the man, say, I can't hear you. <laughs> it has to stop. Love big up yourself, say, we a caller. Um, hold on there. Carrot notice that so flow, they call you old school. These men are hard to find nowadays. No, they're not hard to find. They're out here. They're protecting their resources from vultures. They're protecting their time and their resources from vultures. Because it seems like a lot of women out here today have this vulture mentality. You know what I'm saying? I've seen women who are highly successful who still take on this mentality where uh, he better pay for everything. Matter of fact, he better match my salary or earn more than I do. You know, I, it was a joy watching this lady. She's a doctor in Atlanta and she blogs on Instagram. It was a joy watching her speak yesterday. She said, my husband, my husband works in sanitation. That's why I said sanitation earlier. She said, my husband works in sanitation. And when we met, he was a garbage man. And I was just starting out in school, pursuing my dreams, right? And over the years, of course, she finished up school. She did her residency, whatever. She's a full-fledged physician. And her husband is still in the sanitation field. He doesn't jump off the back of the truck to pick up the garbage anymore. But he drives the truck and he works at the plant. Now, is she supposed to hide from everybody and say, um, um, hide what her husband does for a living or make stuff up? And she says, no, I proudly say what my husband does for a living. And I make 10 times his salary, she said. The lady said, I make 10 times his salary. But you know what? That's my perfect person for me, right? And she went on and on. And she's like, she can't understand this modern day mentality that these women are thinking and she was like i am a doctor who is i'm a lead physician at the hospital when i get in the house i am under his covering yes i have no problem my husband leads my household his decisions we talk about stuff together but ultimately it is his decision and i go along Right. I have no problem taking that manager hat off or taking that hat. Oh, oh, I am the boss. I pick that up when I get back to work. Right. The problem with a lot of today's women, I can buy a house in Trinidad as long as I can fix a house in Jamaica. And I have this and I have that. Boy, I better talk to me nice. So your job position now means uh, I might have to talk to you differently. You're not looking partnership. Yeah, look, somebody you can disrespect when you feel like it based on your job position. <laughs> you're looking at so you're looking for somebody who you can boy boy up because you're a big woman at work. Yes, I run the whole West Wing of the hospital. I am Dr. So and so. I go sit on boy. Won't you go pick up some garbage off the truck? Get the out of here. You know, y'all look for that. You're not looking for a lifetime partner. And what a lot of people don't understand is. You're not going to work that job forever either. There's going to come a day when, you know, the body slows down, you've aged, and you're phased out, and they call it retirement. And now what? Now what? Nobody there for you. You can't take the job home with you and romance the job now, right? So it, it's it, the weirdness of today's women is really, really weird. I tell my brothers like this, man. If you are one of those guys that get up and go get it, right, and you're able to provide it, right, uh, make sure you're doing that for somebody who actually respects you. Don't give that kind of life to nobody who doesn't respect you. Because check it, a woman will use you as a man when they come to you like this. I'm not saying all women. I say the ones that come to you like this. They will use you as a man for a stepping stone. You must pay for everything. You must clean house and take care of kids and do this and do that. Work your fingers to the bone. Work your back till it broke. I don't care. Give me this type of life. And then 
Eventually, she'll come tell you one day, I'm just not happy in this relationship and I lost myself and I have to go find myself. That time my big dick Tom, she meet down the road and she decides it's time to move on now because he has more now and she's already now established herself off of your back. So now it's time to move on to something fresher, more exciting, newer and all that, right? You create that life for a woman who respects you. You create that life for a woman who values your time. And uh, one that I often hear is this. Also, somebody's supposed to respect your things. Your things don't impress me. It's not about things. It's about resources. And everybody's resources is important to them. And nobody should benefit from your resources if they don't respect you. Could you imagine giving somebody some food because you know so them hungry and them eat the food, right? Mm, the food that tastes good. <laughs> Suck your mother. That's what they tell you after you feed them. Are you going to come feed them again? Wouldn't a little gratitude go a long way? Wouldn't, oh my God, this food is so good. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. I was so hungry. And them eat the food. It makes the next time you see them, you want to check on them. Did you eat today? You all right? I might not be able to take you home and put you in my house, but I could at least pass by and make sure you had a meal today, right? So gratitude goes a long way. Respect goes a long way. That's the video I did, uh, the 60-second video on the channel where I said, I did two of them. Somebody said, oh, you're just supposed to do stuff for people and you shouldn't expect anything in return. And I said, everybody who does something for you expects something in return. They might not expect a material thing you're going to give to them when them give you something, but they expect something in return. Respect. Just simple respect, right? A gratitude. Thank you. I appreciate it. That kind of stuff. These women today, they're in relationships like them don't even say thank you. Them just live it. Okay, so what? And you pay all the bills. And... You know, and it's like, okay, um, let me see you go do it by yourself. Let me see you go do it by yourself. Since it's nothing, right, let me see you go do it by yourself. Them not left, you know. You yeah, pay the bills, them happy. But them will talk to you greasy like you're some nobody kind of thing. If you think that those kind of guys are just easy to pick up just everywhere and one is going to come by you every day, you're sadly mistaken. What I see happening is women having to compromise. And when you catch them with somebody who is nowhere near anything that she even likes, right? She'll tell you, she'll tell you that, well, I just had to switch up my style. No, you had to go with the 65-year-old man in your 30. And you, you had to go with the big belly guy with all the gray hair and all that. And him walk with a limp and all. You know that ain't really your style. I'm saying, because you're not even halfway there yet. But you had to go with that because he provides, right? But the kind of guy you actually like is somebody who is fit, tall, handsome, all these other things, but you're rude and disrespectful. You can't have one of those. But there are always men out there who will pay. So what Papa is doing is paying, right? So you rather just be paid. I'm just saying, end of the day, man, in relationships, there are roles. But one thing I know for sure is that respect goes a long way. Anybody who is giving to you as an adult deserves respect. Nobody is giving you anything um, because they owe you something. You understand? So if you're partaking of anybody's resources, whether it's a man who is being uplifted by a woman, a female, because women do that too. They take in men who are on their journey but haven't arrived yet. And the woman has more resources and she pours into this man, right? If it, that man should be grateful because he is partaking in her resources. She's the one with the resources. She can easily replace you at the end of the day and find somebody else, right? So, I mean, be grateful and be respectful. That's the basics. You can't talk crazy to somebody who feed and clothe you and protect you and take care of you on a daily basis. And that's where new age modern women get it twisted. I could do what I want to do. A ninja can't tell me nothing. What you said? Talk to me nice. Who you talking to? Arr, 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 arr. You can't talk to no man like that, 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 or no person like that, period, who is 
the backbone of the resources. It makes common sense. And that's why a lot of you are going through relationship after relationship. Well, you know, it was a good guy, no, but I think I'll find another one or whatever. You didn't know how to keep him. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, family. Talk to winner. So, um, but I'm con for someone very close. And I believe that not all deadbeat fathers are real deadbeat fathers. Yeah. And I know that sometimes it's better to take that label and walk a bit because I've seen guys that um, stay and do everything, take care of the kids, and, you know, they do all the housework and everything. And after a while, as soon as the, the wife is successful, they just let it go. Yeah. But if, if that guy did um, walk away sometimes, you know, toxic relationship. And you're breaking up. You're breaking up badly. Way. You're breaking up bad so the audience can't hear you. I'm making out what you're saying, but I wanted them to hear you clearly. Uh, Are you hearing me better now? Yes. I don't know if you had us on speaker or what the case was, but you weren't coming through clearly. So say what you're saying. So what I'm saying is that many times um, you have guys that stay home or they work, but they do mostly house chores. Mm -hmm. They make sure the kids are okay. They, they're the one that's 80% take care of the kids. And the wife is free, works, and so on. But as soon as the wife becomes extra successful, mm -hmm. they'll move on and kick the guy aside. Yeah, it happens. Which and which many times you have guys that make a lot of... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I see something going on in the comment section. Um... Uh, I think Elaine Brown says another woman bashing morning. Men, women get no credit. And another person says, "Let me see. Yes, Karen, you visit to see that uh, uh, respect is earned based on how you are and how you carry yourself, and it's not freely given." Another person says, "Not because you are the person who is given, um, etc." Okay, let me put it like this, right? If you are around somebody you do not respect. You should not be partaking in their resources. You should get the F from around them. That's simple. Then there would be no room for this conversation. You understand? Okay, so you are the giver and because you take care of everything you feel said. Nah, if you if you don't respect somebody, you shouldn't be partaking. And that this is where this is where a lot of y'all stay and stroke the fire and stroke the fire until you end up on front page. Because not a lot of men. This is why a lot of these men are out here killing off these women. Because, yes, it's wrong, but you have a lot of men who pour a lot in and then feel used. That's why I tell the men, only give what you can afford to lose. But are all of them going to listen? No. So I then come over to the women and I empower you with information by telling you, for one, if you don't really check for that man like that, leave. Let me tell you what happens in a relationship when there is no respect. The person who is giving starts to feel used. Then the person who is giving starts to feel resentful, right? And then you are constant with your disrespect because you don't care about the person like that. So now you have somebody who is disrespecting you back. Now you're in a relationship full of disrespect. Well, my sister, you don't like me anyway because she disrespect me all the time. And she don't like you because so she disrespect you all the time. Why be in a relationship like that? Why be in a relationship like that when you can simply leave? If you don't respect a person, do not partake in their resources. Period. You there, yeah, brother? Yeah, so, be so because even have guys from America take up a woman from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. The guy would invest more. They'll send the woman to school. They'll invest in that woman. They have known women that did that too, though. Um, I'll be honest. I've known women that did the same. Guys, I've seen do it more apparently, but I've known women that did the same too and get end up get left and end up get cheat on and end up no, get all the other stuff too. They so invest in the guy. Mostly, they want you to stay home more than send you to school. No and man, invest in you when they take you up. No, no. I've known cases where the woman invested. I knew one guy. Who actually came from Jamaica and he wanted to, to do auto mechanic and the woman sent him to school he didn't have no bills to pay because he being the, in a position he was immigration wise he didn't qualify for certain things 
So she ended up paying for his school tuition and all that. And him go through him program and him become, you know, a certified a ASE mechanic, them call it, or something like that. And oh. he, he he did her in the most dirtiest way. You know, every girl on the corner was theme girl and uh, every skirt were flying at the wind. He was right behind it and these kind of things. Like mad disrespectful and did it out in the open too. And this was a member of my uncle's church. Because if she was a church sister and she got get him from Jamaica and he came under the guise of a church brother who wanted a wife. So you see, it goes both ways. This deception thing, this disrespect thing, it goes both ways. So if we should balance it out that way, then yeah, that's why I said anybody who you don't respect, meaning if it's a woman and you don't respect the man, don't partake of his resources. And if you're a man and you don't respect the woman and she's the giver, don't partake of her resources. Take your ass go somewhere else, go get your own resources. That way there's no room for that argument. Oh, because you're the one that's paying for everything you feel like, you can't talk to me any kind of way. That kind of stuff. Well, I'm, I'm going to go back in the comment section, but I think this is the morning where a lot of people, you know, sometimes a woman them not like to hear certain things. It, they're gonna take away themselves and come back with yeah and, yeah yeah because that, that's but, just how they are but they have you have to keep it balanced you know if you bash the guys them sometimes the woman them it's not even bash you're just actually open up people's eyes to face reality and if they can do better right my brother fighting. absolutely right absolutely all right. right all right yeah uh, it, it's not bashing i wouldn't what I'm telling, what I'm saying is something I would say to my daughters. Like the Trini lady were called earlier. She was like, you have daughters, man. You have, you, this is exactly what I would say to my daughters. Like the girl that met the guy and went off to his apartment. First they went out to eat. And then after they ate, they went to a bar. That means that them go drink. And then the evening get longer. And then she ended up at his apartment. And then she ended up by 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning in pieces with one leg over here at one park. One headpiece over there, so half hour over here, so she's dismembered, right? And I said, people think I'm bashing when I said her moral compass was compromised. And she was making decisions based on lust and whatever else feeling there was. I would tell my daughters that that's not something you do. You don't meet a guy on social media and the same day you meet him, is the same day you gone out for dinner, then out for drinks, then end up at his house. A house you've never been to before, don't know where you're going. That's why she ended up in the position she was in. If she never did it, she wouldn't be there. So for me, if I point that out now, oh, that's bashing a woman. Oh, that's blaming the victim. How is that blaming the victim? That is raising awareness. That's the reason why... <laughs> That's the reason why it's important to be under the covering of a good man. The covering of a man. Man. You understand? And if you want to listen, you listen. If you don't want to listen, you go right out there and you end up where you end up. And you do your thing. But nothing about that says bashing the victim. I feel like every time a man talks or brothers, it's black women that do it specifically. Really. Because I watch Spanish women and their men. They listen. I watch Asian women and their men. They definitely listen. I watch um, white people and for them, man, them definitely listen. It's the black woman most of the time that is severely com um, combative when it comes to what the black man has to say to her. And we could get into why that is too on a psychological level, you know, but it would take a long journey back to show you what was done specifically to make it the way it is. Your woman will always look at you and think, you can't provide for me. You can't protect. You can't really protect me. I've I seen what they did to you right in front of me. You couldn't do nothing. So I know you really can't protect me. If you think she don't think that and it doesn't linger in the back of her mind, you're sadly mistaken because it does. Right? So it comes from all of that and no long talk about that, that. I'm just saying, stop being so tight up when somebody tries to share knowledge with you or try to because sometimes it's upliftment sometimes it's upliftment if somebody is taking the time to teach you give you information that can make you a better person that should be taken with gratitude i know everybody i gonna look for you and give you information that can make you better somebody who don't care about you will say go live your life girl 
Don't listen to what nobody got to say. Do you. You got one life to live. It sounds good until you end up on the front page of somebody's newspaper. The person who says, nah, I don't think that's what you should be doing. This can happen. That can happen. That can happen. That person, oh, you're a hater. Or oh, you always blaming the victim. Or oh, you always take the abuser's side. Okay. Well, go right ahead. Go right ahead. See? Because of what the black man put her through, Veronica Gale said. Veronica goes way back than that. Because the black man hadn't put the black woman through nothing that the black woman hadn't put the black man through. Okay? So it goes way back than that. Matter of fact, black man's struggle is black woman's struggle. And black woman's struggle is black man's struggle. But there was a, a divisive plan put in place to where we are divided to feel like your struggle is not my struggle and you are my enemy and I'm your enemy and we're supposed to struggle and fight against each other. You don't see anybody else operating like that, right? Right? You don't see anybody else operating like that. Kaita Ja Emperor says, no caller, we just don't like the one-sided debate. There is no debate, though, Kaita Ja Empress. A debate is a conversation between two people arguing a point. There is no debate. This is me speaking to you. I'm just delivering a message from my perspective. That's not a debate. You see, you feel attacked, right? Right. And it's some of the people who I wouldn't even expect to be, like Kaita Ja Empress. You feel attacked for what? What exactly did I say? Type it out intelligently or call in. And, and say it intelligently. What, watch this. Watch this. To any of you, here's a challenge. What did I say that was offensive to or degrading or disrespectful to a woman? What did I say? Be specific. Call in right now and say it. I'm waiting for the phone to ring. I'm waiting to hear you. The number is on the screen. So if I wasn't debasing you, if I wasn't being degrading and disrespectful to you, what's the problem? The problem is that it's a black man that's talking to you. The problem is that I'm delivering sense and intelligence. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Hello. I just see him. The see him, brother. I would just see him. Not. Listen, bro. If you're gonna call in, uh, make sure you're good so I can hear you. The mumbling there and so floor, the one so floor, me hear you. I respect that. I want the the line clear because I want the women who are against what I'm saying to call in. I want the ones who are taking this personal and are turning this into when I like the one sided debate. And all that. I want them to call in and explain that intelligently. Because I could sit here and explain it. Then we could have a debate. But a debate is two sides going at it. Over one topic, right? Me drawing a different conclusion from you. And me trying to assert my points and you try. That's a debate. This is no debate. I'm not debating with anybody. I'm telling you ways to stay safe. I'm telling you ways to have a productive, progressive relationship. I'm telling you ways to have a relationship where not only you are happy, but your partner is happy as well. See, there's a problem, right? In modern day time, these women, a lot of these women, not all of them, because <clears throat> there are some good ones out there, but a lot of these women don't care if their partner is happy. They don't care if that man is suicidal. They don't give a frig if that man won't go hang himself later. They don't care if that man is overburdened. That nigga better cry in the shower or go cry to his homeboys. Do not cry in front of me. They don't care if that man is going through hell and high water. They don't give a damn as long as they are happy. Where y'all think the happy wife, happy life comes from? That saying that they were trying to push. Where you think that come from? Happy wife, happy life. Happy wife, happy life. Nobody else in the household is supposed to be happy. But as long as she is happy, everybody should be happy, which is a bug of bullshit that way, right? So when we speak against that and we say, yo, care about the person who cares about you. Come on, that's common decency. That ain't no debate. Care about the person who cares about you, 
respect the person who provides for you. If there's somebody who you can depend on, if there's somebody who you can call on, if there's somebody who's always there for you, you show that person respect. That's that's minor stuff. That's minor, That shouldn't be no argument. Everybody should be in agreement with that. But you know, when you speak like that and you see who disagrees with it, then you get an idea of who you're dealing with and who is who. We, we're all not the same. We're all not the same. We're having this conversation because these types of women do exist, right? Yeah. So with that said, I'm still waiting for y'all to call. Ain't nobody calling. Ain't nobody calling. I want to switch topics now because we have other things to talk about. Our last call for alcohol. Ain't nobody calling. The bar's about to shut. I don't hear it. Don't lose track of where this conversation started. Yes, Sharon Ingram, mutual actions. But remember how this conversation started and what I chose to spoke about this morning. And it was about a list that was put out that has gone viral from a woman about things that a man must do. And these are the requirements and a lot of other women have signed off on that list. So that's where the basis of the conversation came from. Right? So I don't know if some of you jumped into the conversation like in the middle of it and got lost or something. Right. But anytime you talk to them, man, I bash you, I bash them. Listen, who listens, listens. Okay? And shout out to the good wife, them out there who know how to keep their husband happy and has his interest at heart and his happiness at heart y'all will go a long way the rest of them they'll end up with a miserable partner and then they'll end up somewhere divorced down the road that's why people married and then oh we've been together for 40 years and we're filing for a divorce <laughs> live on the air with soflo good morning i'm calling in to say so i feel like this um, list must have been put together by either a man or a dumbass woman because there is no woman in their right mind would say yes to the stupid list. Her picture this is with is really the list. just making women look foolish. Her picture is with the list. It was put together by a woman. No, and the, this, the people no. in the comment section are mostly women. I just well, chose to have a conversation about modern women's mindset based on this list. Mm -mm. This woman is, is an idiot. Yeah, and we're not saying that every woman stays so. Full idiot. And for all, everybody who is in the chat complaining that uh, you're bashing women, it's not even bashing women, it's enlightening. It is enlightening. Men need women respect. So just like how um, women need men to respect them, why would you be with anybody who doesn't respect you? Mm -hmm. You want things, you buy your own things. Women feel like oh, men should do this, men should do that. What can you do for yourself? Mm. What do you bring to the table? Uh, mm -mm. You see, and, and now and now everybody are going to start taking it to a whole different direction, like now Kataja Empress is saying, wow, and now we have low intelligence and we are dumb. Wow. Who said that? No, 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 no. I'm saying the list. Veronica Gale is saying is the stupid. list is a joke, right? And the I said from the beginning, I said from the beginning, whether it's a joke or it's a fake list, it's fake, but it's real in real life because there are women who think like this in real life. This is the modern day woman's mindset that was put out as a list. So whether you want to say it's a joke or not, it still was a point of conversation. Exactly, and that's right. why there were so many women in that comment agreeing with the foolishness. Right, because they they exist a lot. Yeah, no, right. I totally disagree with that list, one hundred percent. Right. My husband, he take care of all the bills, mm -hmm. everything, but that's by choice. Do you do you 
Do you speak to your husband crazy or disrespectful? I would never do that. I respect my husband. My husband respects me. All right. But that's how we do it in our house. He All takes right. care of the bill and I take care of the house. I don't even allow my husband to take out trash. I deal with that stuff myself. All and right. he deal with the bill and we both make really good money. All right. And a woman like you will definitely understand exactly all I've been trying to say. See, if the shoe fit, wear it. If the shoe don't fit, don't even put on the shoe, man. That's what. That's what. That's how that goes. You know. Uh, well, I, that, just keep enlightening. I appreciate you, sister. Thank you. I have a good one. You too, brother. All right. Yeah. See that there? Good. They're, they're out there. They're out there, and they're doing their thing, and they're happy because they know how to make it work. Yeah, I wouldn't dare speak to him crazy. Because she knows what she has, right? Appreciation, man, and respect. That's it. Now, let's move right along. Because I told you that the topic is, was going to be a bit touchy this morning, and apparently it was, right? But we are going to get ourselves back and move on to our next topic now. Since we're upon woman bashing, let's run through this one real quick. And I'm hitting this with no breaks. So just pay attention because I'm not going to stay too long at it. A school teacher was caught naked in a car with a teenager. And she is actually married, right? She is married to a Harvard-educated government official. I just did the video for this this morning and placed it on my other channel, which is Hot Topics TV over at BrainFlow TV. The Nebraska teacher caught naked in a car with a teenage student is a mom who is married to a Harvard-educated, high-ranking federal government employee, according to records and social media accounts. Erin Ward, she's 45 years old, allegedly confessed to having sex with a 17-year-old boy who is a student at Burke High School where she worked, in the back of the car, and was charged with felony sexual abuse by a school employee. By sleeping with the teen, Ward is also accused of cheating on her husband, who is a director of the Department of Defense, with whom she shares three kids, according to social media posts that were earned by Gretna Couple. Doe Ward, who has spent, which is her husband, Doe Ward, has spent nearly two decades with the U.S. Strategic Command, one of the unified combatants com command within the Defense Department, headquartered by Offutt Air Force Base in Omaha, according to his LinkedIn page. Doe Ward began his career as Deputy Branch Chief in 2005 and was promoted to Deputy Director of the Commander's Action Group in February of this year. Doe Ward also has a long educational history with degrees from the University of Illinois, Bellevue, Univers <laughs> Bellevue University, and and Harvard University. He's currently completing his doctorate degree in defense and strategic studies at Missouri State University as well. Their relationship was first reported by Daily Mail. Aaron Ward was arrested early sun Saturday when Douglas County Sheriff deputies found her fooling around with a teenage boy in a car that she shares with her husband. They ran the ownership of the car, the plate, and all that. It came back to her home address, the ownership of the car. The car is owned by her and her husband, Have both have their names on it. So there was a car parked in a neighborhood at a dead-end street. There was a car parked in a neighborhood at a dead-end street in the neighborhood. The, the people in this high-end neighborhood thought, hmm... The car looks suspicious. It's been parked there for a while. So what they did was they called the police. Could y'all come check this car out? The police slowly approached the car. When the police got close up to the car, there is one unit who is filming the guy, the other police officer approaching the car. He presses his face against the car like this. Inside of the car, he sees this 45-year-old woman and the 17-year-old boy, and they are both butt-ass naked going at it in the back seat. She looks up and sees the police officer, according to the report, and fling the youth. The youth jumps in the driver's seat of the car, starts the car, and drives away. 
the police gave chase. Two blocks down the road, the youth, the 17-year-old, crashes the car tree on somebody's lawn on private property, gets out of the car butt naked, and runs. He escapes into nearby neighborhoods. She is still in the backseat trying to get dressed as fast as possible. They took her out of the car. She is arrested. Another unit combed the neighborhood, and about two hours later, they found the same young man in that neighborhood. I guess he was waiting for them to leave, but now he had on a pair of boxers, a pair of socks, and a T-shirt, and that's all he had. He didn't have a pants on, didn't have anything else on him, no shoes, no nothing. He went to somebody's house and asked for some clothes, and they gave him a pair of boxers, a pair of socks, and a shirt. <laughs> so, so it tickles me when I hear, you know, we don't need no man. Or is it, yeah, because y'all got your eyes on them little boys. You see, the thing about this is, right, this is starting to be something that happens way too often now. And I keep on doing these stories just so that everybody can be aware that this is happening way more than ever before. That's her with makeup. Makeup does wonders. That's her with makeup. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I covered this story this morning on the other channel. There, the, the, the details of her husband, however, is not in the video on the other channel. I found this out this morning because this piece of information this morning was released by the New York Post about her husband. His, his face is also printed and I'm like, oh my God, this is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. Why even print the man's face, right? Knowing that your colleagues are going to be laughing at you. This is her without makeup on at her arrest. Right. And I, I won't show the guy face. I won't be a part of the machine that shows his face. He's a high profile guy. He... he <laughs> Highly educated, high profile, had nothing to do with what she was doing. So I don't know why they dragged him and put him on front page. But just to show you how embarrassing this could be. Your husband is the director of securities. Your husband, uh, uh, director of defense. Your husband works with the Air Force. Your husband is a Harvard graduate. Your husband is currently finishing up his PhD. She works as a substitute teacher, and she's what you call a floater, and she floats between four to five schools. I guess she was pursuing her dreams. I'll use that story to say this to you, like I always say. Predators come in all forms, man and woman. And teenagers, children too, some children prey on others. But these people in positions that they need to be or the respect is normally given because of that position, they will purposely work themselves into a position like this. They will go to school. They will know from high school that they're like this, that they have these urges. They will make sure they go to college and study this degree. I want to work around kids because in the back of their mind, I will have access to these children and I will be trusted and I can do what I want to do. Right? And then they'll end up eventually being like this lady right here. Some of them get away with it. Some of them don't get away with it. She didn't get away with it. And not only did she did not get away with it, she got caught red-handed big time. Big time. So be careful out there. And I tell all parents, foster a relationship with your children. You're not supposed to be your children's bestie. But foster a relationship with your children to where they're not afraid to come tell you certain things that's happening around them. You know what I mean? A lot of children can't speak to their parents, so they hide stuff. Foster that kind of relationship with them, even though enough of you in here don't have children. But you have nieces and nephews, and you have these kind of things around. So, yeah, you can apply that there also. Now, uh, moving right along, because I didn't want to spend too much time on that. We, we did that topic this morning. Pretty saucy. Let me see. Let's send out our condolences. 
send out our condolences to a squaddy who was gunned down. The squaddy was gunned down in St. Anne. He was gunned down in St. Anne. A member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force was shot and killed in a confrontation with gunmen in St. Anne on Monday evening. A manhunt is underway for the man who is believed to have killed the policeman. Dead is Constable Ricardo Fairclaw. Reports are that shortly after 9, Monday evening, Constable Fairclaw was at a supermarket in the parish when he observed a robbery was in progress. It is understood that during the robbery, he went to go see what's going on, confront the robber, and the robber opened fire, hitting another person, but also hitting Constable Fairclaw. Constable Fairclaw reportedly went to the assistance of the injured person that was hit, and he engaged the gunman, and that is how he himself got hit. He was taken to the hospital where he died. So, you know, there are a lot of people over here saying, how come the road not block yet? And stuff like that. Some people are saying, oh, this is what it means to be a hero. You died in the line of duty, going to help somebody else, all these other things. Uh, that's a picture of him, Constable Fairclaw, who lost his life in the line of duty. You know, I always say shout out to the people going out to work, coming in from work. Shout out to medical personnel, military personnel, law enforcement personnel, because it's a dangerous job that they do do. And also, listen, whether you like police or not, you see, if you think Jamaica bad now, I want you to imagine Jamaica with no police, right? Officer Fairclaw could have done what the typical would do. Them not pay me enough for this. Me not the pan job. I'm not on the job right now. I'm going to hide around here, sir, because I'm going to shut a fly. I'm going to hide around here like everybody else, and then I'm going to make it home in one piece. Right. He saw somebody robbed. He saw somebody shot. And although he was off the clock, he went over there to render assistance. The gunman started firing at him. He was firing back, but he got hit. He died in the line of duty, even though he was off duty. Right? Right. So with that, our condolences goes out to him. Um, to his family, surviving members of his family, and so on and so forth. It's a sad story, but I think justice will be served because they have a picture out of the individual who they are saying did the shooting. And shout out to Jamaica Tory too for putting this one up. So that's the individual who they are looking for who did the shooting. Now I've done videos like these before and then somebody call in later and says, so Flo, take down my brother picture because I know him do it. And I said, I'll take it down once I get confirmation from JCF, which is Jamaica Constabulary Force, that this is not who they were looking for. Lo and behold, the people who call and said, take down my brother picture. Was either his cronies trying to get me to take down him picture or him girl or somebody, but it was exactly the person they were looking for. So, with that said, I've been down this road before. If you see a picture up here and this is not you, call and say, take it down. If JCF, if I contact JCF and JCF says it's not him, I'll take it down. I'll chop the video out with your picture in it, right? But this is the picture that is circulating of the individual who has said to have taken the life of Constable Fairclaw. And this is who they are looking for. Right. So, in swift order, justice should be served. Right. All right. With that said, moving right along. Now on to the Vibes Cartel um, story. So, Vibes Cartel. This is the most popular law... I would say the most popular case out of Jamaica because of who is involved in it, right? Whether you listen to dancehall music or not, you're talking about somebody who is labeled as the king of dancehall. You're talking about somebody who is very popular, not only in Jamaica, but across the globe, really. And U.S. interests, along with other interests, 
are now heavily involved in this case because of what happened recently at Privy Council. Again, Privy Council is the highest court for Jamaica. It is located in the UK. That tells us that Jamaica is not independent in and of itself because their highest court is still located in the UK and is still governed by the law lords of the United Kingdom. We saw Vibes Cartel case go to the Privy Council. The Privy Council was transparent. We saw everything. We heard everything, right? Right. It ended up where his conviction and guilty verdict and conviction was overturned in a word they use called quashed. Enough, I would never know what quashed mean. Yesterday, I put up a video because they have released now that the Privy Council has their paperwork has now gotten back to Jamaica to the Court of Appeals, where they have given the authorities in Jamaica the right, if they see fit, if it's in the pursuit of justice, to either try them again, retrial, or freedom, acquittal, let them go. So this is where we stand. Here's something I want to clear up, and I'm going to say it slowly. When they went to the Privy Council, the Privy Council had a third choice. That choice was they could have looked at this case and the Privy Council could have said, well, I understand that they made a mistake, but the evidence is so overwhelming. It is something we cannot argue with. This is proof beyond. Let the life sentence stand. They did not do that. They overturned the conviction. So, somebody typed yesterday in a big something like this on the channel, under the video, and said, you know, they call me other things beside criminal supporter, vibes cartel, gal, you love him more now, you love your wife, you know, all the side talk and chatter. I don't pay it no mind, really. I think it's humorous, so I mention it. But let me clear this up for you. The person said, you think I saw it go? Cartel can't walk out. Either the DPP are going to try him again, or he's going to have to continue and finish out his 35 years before eligible for parole on the sentence that was given before. That makes no damn sense. But I understand everybody's understanding is not at the same place. The word quashed means it never happened. It's like it never happened. So <laughs> for all the Vibes Cartel enemies, I want you to understand that when they went to the Privy Council, that quashed returned him Shad Storm, Kahira Jones, and Audrey St. John back to being innocent men in the eyes of the law. They are just accused of murder now. There is no longer a life sentence hanging over their head. There is no longer a guilty verdict. It does not exist anymore. That is what the quashed means. This is also why they have given the court in Jamaica the appeal court in Jamaica with the three panel judges and the Department of Public Prosecution, the chance to, if this is in the pursuit of justice, to try them again or to let them go. Call it an acquittal. And that is where it's at. So for the people who are saying, oh, you think you're going to walk out? No. If the DPP don't get our new trial, if I forgot to do the 35, he, if, if she doesn't get awarded a new trial, he'll be walking out. Plain and simple like that. If she is awarded a new trial, his attorneys have said it already, they will be seeking bail where he can fight this case from the outside because he has already done 13 years in lockup already and only to have that overturned and quashed, right? So that's what's going to happen between June 10th. It's June 10th and 15th. It's five days. 
I, um, if you check my video from yesterday, it will tell you how much time Vibes Cartel, Sean Storm, and the rest of the guys' attorneys have to make their case first. They're given the first go. They must go before the Court of Appeal and make their case. Why there should not be a retrial. They got to get up there and say, well, my Lord or your honor, this case does not have legs to stand on. All the evidence has been compromised or found by experts to have been compromised. The very house where uh, the murder said to have happened no longer exists because the house was bulldozed by the state into rubbles and done away with. Um, etc. etc. A B C D E. They can't go up there and say everything. And then the prosecution, DPP, Paula Llewellyn's team side, they will over look over that and they will go in now before the same three panel judges and say, My Lord, this is why we think we need a retrial. Because we still have this piece of evidence that is irrefutable. We still can prove this. We still can prove that, that, and we are confident that we can get a guilty verdict. That's what's about to happen all over again, right there. And when that is done, they will decide, uh, at this point, 13 years in, let it go, right? Do we have the resources? Do we have the this, the that, and the other? Or they can be like, yes, let's go back to trial again, and they will go back to trial again. That's where the case is at. So I hope everybody is on the same page now. Uh, Reggae Girl says he could go along with her as her son. Audrey Wright, meaning the earlier decision is no longer accepted. It's set aside. It's voided. Yeah, quashed. Kaitaja Empress says there are now accused men behind bars awaiting a hearing. Exactly. And Veronica Gale says that is why when they ask its lawyer about Bill, he asks them, what Bill? How can you build somebody, build somebody that is innocent? We'll see where it goes from here. I'm paying attention to it. And of course, you know, I'm going to give you the, um, it's May 6th. Go check the video I did yesterday. The video I did yesterday has all the information in it. I don't think it's 6th, it's the 10th. I'm pretty sure it's the 10th. I'm not looking at it right now. I don't want to give out false information, but I was looking at the proper information when I did the video. So the video has, there you go, BM. It's June 10th. I believe it's June 10th to June 15th. It's over a five-day period. There will be a hearing, right? And they will then decide who says what and what goes next. What I predict is going to happen, I predict that Paula Llewellyn is going to fight for a retrial, like she said she is going to do. I predict that um, based on how Jamaica is set up and based on how the trial judge and then the three privy count the, the three appeal judges agreed with her before. Because I want you all to know this. When that same decision that the Privy Council made in the UK. When, when, when that incident happened with that guy, the judge called everybody into chambers. Paula Llewellyn herself said it to the public that Vibes Cartel's team at the time, Sean Storm, Kair Jones, them, their attorneys at the time said, no, don't go forward with the case. I don't know why people are saying them did agree to. No, Paula Llewellyn said, they said, no, that's a breach. Stop. We have to do what we have to do according to law. Paula Llewellyn, however, said, I'm prepared to go ahead. The judge sided with Paula Llewellyn and went ahead. Big mistake. Then it went to the Court of Appeals. And three judges who sit on the panel for the Court of Appeals also passed over that same mistake when they had a chance to correct it there. Then it went to... The UK. And when it went to the UK, the law lords, I remember one of them saying, I don't even see how this came to us because this should have been seen from a lower level. It should have been seen from at least the Court of Appeals if the trial judge had made that mistake. So in my mind, what the outcome will be is, remember, I know, Valerie Nita Robertson 
King's Council attorney at law said that Jamaica is too small. What do you think she was implying? Everybody know everybody, she said. What do you think she was implying? She was implying that within their field, Paul Llewellyn has been there since 19, God know how long, as the head of the Department of Public Prosecution. She has a certain level of respect within the ranks. She knows certain people where she can say, give me the case, man. Give me, let me, give me the retrial. That's what I think, right? And they'll grant the retrial. Just like how she said, Ah, oh, no worry about that mistake. They set it forward, shoot down the, the appeal, and they did until it got to the Privy Council who said, uh-uh, this can't go. Had he not have the resources to fight all the way to Privy Council, you could imagine what would have happened, right? Right. He would still have 35 years to life hanging over his head before eligible for parole, et cetera, et cetera, guilty and all these other things. So on one end, he's lucky because him have all those resources to be able to fight that thing that far. But it, it clearly shows you the bias within the system. Now, will there be able to be a fair trial in Jamaica? Impossible. Where are they going to get any jury pool of people who knows nothing about the Vibes Cartel case or trial? It's been on now for 13 years. Everybody has looked at it from all angles know way more than you're supposed to know if you're going to be a juror seated on a case. They never normally choose a person who has studied a case completely and has already made a decision. You're not qualified to be a juror. <coughs> the qualifications of a juror is somebody who knows very little about a case, but is willing to sit, listen to all the angles, and come up with an unbiased decision based on what is presented to them. That's what a juror is supposed to do. Where are they going to find that? And if somebody says, okay, well, this will have to be trial by judge, that's a whole different story. It's a murder trial that requires a jury of 12 by law. And I think at Privy Council, they said one juror could have fallen out and it would have been 11, which then they would have... So, something, something in there, but it requires jurors and a certain amount of jurors is what I know, right? Well, they're looking jurors for Trump. But we don't know nothing about Trump. All right, let's take this last phone call for the morning. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Flo. Yeah, um, family. The Vibes Carter case to us in Jamaica is like the O.J. Simpson case to all America. Mm. It's like almost everybody in America, we are the age of between 30, 35, 40 and up. They all know about the O.J. Simpson case. Right, right. So right. it's kind of really difficult to find somebody that's unbiased without their own opinion. and will Almost impossible. Almost impossible. Yeah. All right. Right. Wait, wait, wait. Missy Bram Bram says, really, little bro, you don't know how to grab girl by them. <laughs> I know that. That's not, that, that's not what his case is about. The man case is about the insurrection um, at the, when them run over run the uh, capital and all these other things. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Me no say I drop man. I am not sensitive this morning. I'm not. Mm -hmm. But as a person brought up the old business case, mm -hmm. I listened to the note that you put up the other day. I thought you missed one important piece of information. Which was what? Let me tell you this. Don't the million man march arise from the old business case after he was freed out or not guilty? No, the million man march had nothing to do with the OJ Simpson case at all. Mm -hmm. All right, listen to what I'm saying to you. Yeah. I heard you. But after the case, I remember they organized this million man march. So they the million man march, have, the million mm -hmm. man march had to do with Rodney King being beaten senselessly. And and um it did have to do with the OJ Simpson case. Okay, well, if you say so. Yeah, because oh, Rodney well, King was beaten I... senselessly on camera. And then all of the uh, officers who beat him senselessly on camera were 
uh, let go. And then them start burning down one part of one place out in LA and randomly beating up white people in the streets and stuff. And then that trickled down into other events that happened. And then came the Million Man March. But it, it, one didn't have anything to do with the other, though. Okay. Well, all right, then. All right. To be corrected. <laughs> all right. All right, but I'm not to not uh, money, All right, right. all right. <laughs> <laughs> lovely Aleka. <laughs> yes. Lovely Aleka said, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> lovely Aleka, big up yourself. Lovely Aleka just entered the chat. For those of you who mess with her content, big up to you. For those of you who don't, click the link. Lovely Aleka right there in gray. Go over to her channel and check out her content. Yeah, but we were... We were we were children back in them time, but I remember very well. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Blessings, brother, brother. Uh, go on. Man, as I respect King Madan, no or what? Man, as I respect King Madan, or what? you have a pan speaker or something? Cause no, we can't hear yeah, you. Yeah. All right, better. Yes, man. Eh, yeah. in reference to the whole vibes cartel thing, you see. Mm -hmm. As why you said the, the, the Queen's Council here they say to make a smile. Mm -hmm. And everybody know See, everybody. Everybody know everybody. Mm -hmm. But me can almost tell us say of you. If me see more than my me not what's your name the, the, the DPP? Yeah. Uh Paul, Paul 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 ego to make this slide. All when he know say not not did it. Shall go fight. She has to fight and she has to fight hard. Yeah. See, I mean, I won't be surprised. Not I'm left this on the, left this in your comment section yesterday. Mm -hmm. You see, any other really go for a retrial? Mm -hmm. Sure, you said Jamaica system corrupt and now I'm going to change. I'm going to put some more to that, some more context to that. But Trust me. Yeah. All Trust right. Based on what is there right now. Mm hmm. We do a situation. There's no way the man will get a fair trial. If he never get it any worse, then I'll get to know. <laughs> so if then for even the upset, we won't do real trial. Hey. We don't get the paper from Don't to every judge know. All judge wanna involved with the case. Family court judge know about this like yes, sir. Yeah. Everybody know about the can not can find nobody who will go be unbiased. So Fox. the moment then go say Rachel, just know say I hear me. For Greg go on. You see, you see before Jamaica clean up mm -hmm. from from Bro God to DPPT, all of them. Some of them have got prison. Mm -hmm. Until then, it, it bullshit was still going. All right, sir. Not me, officer. Bless up yourself. Man as I respect. <laughs> yeah. Well, he said it. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say, but he said it. Um, you must understand, right, that everybody who hold these types of positions, they hope for one big case that's going to mark their career. You know, imagine saying, I'm the one that put Vibes Cartel and his cronies behind bars. Don't forget, um, Ellington, when Ellington was a head, was the head of the police in Jamaica, police commissioner, uh, Owen Ellington, remember, he got on TVJ. And he said, Vibes Cartel is the leader of a gang that is responsible for over a hundred murders across the island. And I was sitting there watching it the evening and I said to myself, wow, that is so defamatory. Where is the proof behind this, right? Clock is ticking. May I wait for here? Uh, no, no proof. So for the for the police commissioner to get on television and say you are the SoFlo TV, you see we have him in custody. It's because Uno, every time we grab him and grab him, friend them, Uno come talk about them innocent. What you don't know is he is the lead. He is the leader of a gang who is responsible for over one hundred murders across the island. Now, who listens to the news more than anything? Older people. Mid-age to older people. And in our culture in Jamaica, these people give respect to people who are politician, police, pastor, you know, the three P them, and so on, the elderly. 
and trickle down. So that is the reason why what they did right there, I said it back then. I said in order to crucify, they must first vilify. Because you can't crucify nobody good in front of people. And people know say them good. The crowd will have a problem with it. Right? After that man, they don't do nobody nothing. No man, they can't do him like that. They can't crucify you. The way they crucify you is they vilify you first. Boom, that statement. Vibes Cartel is the leader of a gang that's responsible for over 100 murders across the island. Everybody after that said, clean up Jamaica, that dirty ass. Hang him. Him for staying there forever. Nobody bothered to say, well, the police commissioner says about um, them have no proof though. That's serious stuff. That is serious stuff. You can go look this up. I think Vibes Cartel them had a lawsuit coming against TVJ and they had to take down the content and all this other stuff. I guess it was worked out behind the scenes, right? But a real thing, me I tell you no, and it actually did happen. Now, fast forwarding to today and seeing what go on today, it's the same system that he is looking at to say, okay, we had enough of you. We get 13 years out of you. Let's do an acquittal, time served, walk away. Or, no, remember, I know, time served when I was never guilty because the Privy Council does quash that conviction as if it never happened. But who pays me for my 13 years that I stayed behind bars and did an unfair trial? I'm behind bars based on an unfair trial. Is there grounds for legally to sue? Lost wages, stress, all these other kind of things. Somebody said yesterday, the only way a cartel will come out of that is if they agree to sign some non-disclosure agreement that says they will not sue. Because a high earner like him, if you multiply fame earnings, what he possibly could have been making for the last 13 years, and Jamaica money probably are going to end up in the trillions to have to pay him back, right? Hundreds of millions, if not trillions, to have to pay him back. So do they want that lawsuit on their hands against the state? Is he going to sue? And I, from my opinion, I said this. If they put a paper before cartel, I'm thinking like I'm me. If they put a paper before me and them say, watch yourself, low. we let you go in a butt. We want you to sign that so say you're not going to sue it because, you know, me understand how the thing work out. And we're I would gladly sign that paper. Me not have nothing to sue you for. Here come. Sign off, let me out, please. More and got my yard. I'm not thinking about suing, I'm thinking about being free. And you got to think about who he is, too. And if he gets out in the way that he would get out an acquittal, this would mean that him not have nothing criminal upon him record. So, all the places that have all the opportunities that are waiting for him largely Europe, Africa, and other places like that, and all the people who are heavy hitters in different genres of music who are waiting to work with him, he will instantly be available to them. Treat money that, right? The amount of money that's sitting on the table for this guy to make now once him come out, he's not going gonna to need a team and a team of money counters at the money there. He's not like going to be dropping instantly in the money. But, Llewellyn. So, here we are with Paula Llewellyn. Here's my thing. And I don't want to say nothing dirty about the lady because somebody said yesterday, well, so Flo is like, we have the blade and she have the anger right now, you know. This is not a humble down. This is us looking at things from different angles. Check this out. Paula Llewellyn is the head of the DPP. Her job is to bring about justice or to bring about closure in the form of justice for the victim and the victim's family right so if she just give up i say okay well no i i don't want no retrial or nothing the victim's family is could go away saying damn she didn't even fight for no justice for our family member remember i know they're convinced that that's what happened. So she just gave up. So even if it's not personal, it, which I think it is though, but even if it's not personal, she still owes the victim's family something. So she has to go at least try 
to say if she could get a retrial. Now it will be up to the three panel, the the judge with the the three judges on the panel to say why the trial judge made an error. The same error skip past we are we make the same error and send it to Privy Council and Privy Council now send it back to us to correct ourselves. What do we do here? Because we look bad. Those men just served 13 years and came back with not guilty. Came back with being innocent men who are who stand accused. Now, after 13 years behind bar, where do we go with this? Do we say, okay, we've had enough? Time served, let it out. Or do we say, double down on our wrong and go in again? We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Missy Bram Bram says, why you say our job? No little bro. Her job is to make sure she look good. <laughs> I saw. <laughs> I that you say. No get, no get me in no trouble. I that you say. I, I think her job, the job of the prosecution is to bring justice to the victims and our alleged victims and their family members, surviving family members, and get justice for the person who um for victims yeah so they're the same ones who are going to be prosecuting noel maitland when it comes time to get big um when it comes time to get justice for donnelly and donnelly's family right so it, th that's their job that's, that's their job live on the air with soflo good morning hey so turn on the steel you're not gonna know yeah. let's get Ellie Lewis. <laughs> you don't say your last call for you morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> she said, go get L.A. Lewis. Do we remain wrong and strong? Yes. Or do we rectify this in some kind of way where everybody walk away from it and basically leave it where it's at? Right, including bold 12 million US. Well, they said Paula is dragging her feet on the bold 12 million US because nobody has been prosecuted, no, nobody has been brought up on any other kind of charges except for the one woman. So, her office obviously probably in cahoots with the people who took the money and then slowed down the investigation and not really doing no investigation on the situation. So, bold money gone into next of never. His money is in. You will see his money January 71st, uh, 2027. Yeah. And that me think too. We need justice for the X6 youth. Pussy Galore, this is exactly why I said, where was the energy? You see, in the X6 trial, right, Paul Llewellyn went in there and said, the DPP went in there and said, we have nothing further, which we know if she had pursued it, she would have gotten what she wanted. But because of who that individual was, she didn't pursue it. Go and look up the X6 trial. Everybody knows that it wasn't that man that did it. Everybody knows the fingerprints to his son. His son who was allowed to leave the country. While daddy came in to take care of the situation, throw his weight and influence around a bit, and take care of, you know. So, with that said, all Paul Llewellyn had to do was say this. Obviously, sir, we know it's not you because you weren't in the country. But what they did was they tried the father, knowing damn well, sir, from the beginning, it's not going to be him and it's going to be an acquittal. And it, so it was, right? They could have said, Paul Llewellyn and her team could have said from the beginning, listen, we know it wasn't you. Time stamp. You're in the airport, you travel, you was out of the country, where where's your son? Because a lot of people are saying, where is the taxi driver? Where the ta People, anybody know if the taxi driver is still alive? Where that taxi driver disappeared. Where is the taxi driver? Nobody can tell me. Yo, the taxi driver come out strong, you know, and talk up, you know. And then the man disappear. No more statement. Never to be seen again. I don't know. I don't know if him gone in a cave. Go live over. So I don't know if them give him visa. Send him gone to Europe somewhere. If he go live or whatever. 
But Paula Llewellyn dropped that ball purposely. And as intelligent as she is when it comes to trying cases, come on now, she knew exactly what she was doing. So this is why I say, where was that same energy if you're going to pursue this Vibes Cartel case thing to depths? How come you didn't save, uh, use that same energy to pursue that particular case with the X6? So, Flo, families, please come out and join the One Jamaica Defense Foundation March on May 10th in Manhattan, 42nd Street. Um, is there a site that we can see that on Reggae Girl? The One Jamaica Defense Foundation. What I'll go, I, I want to go read up what that's about. In Manhattan, 42nd Street, May 10th. Yeah, all right. We're going to close out with this story this morning and a lesson, all right? We offer the Vibes Cartel stuff. I think we beat that one enough, and everybody should be on the same page now as to what is about to happen next. Again, for the people them who say, Ross, dog, I'm going to name him supper because even if Paula don't get our new trial, him have to go finish doing him 35 years before eligible before parole. That's a lie. The word quashed took care of that. He has nothing hanging over his head. If she doesn't get a new trial, Vibes Cartel walks. So does Sean Storm and the rest of them. Right. With that said, I found this story very interesting and wanted to share it. So I'll go through it quickly. One of those with no bricks. And we'll leave on a good term this morning. All right. Uh, what good, everybody. Karen Notice. Big up yourself. Thank you for tuning in. Have a wonderful day. Unforgettable love. Dementia cannot stop the bond between this husband and wife. And this is an article that was published um, the 16th of April 2024 here. Jamaica Star. A spiritual connection is what Alton Marshalek believes has kept his marriage to Dr. Edith Marshalek going for over 60 years and counting. But the last few years have been the toughest one of their union because Edith is now 94 years old and she's been diagnosed with, dime with dementia since 2018. She encouraged me and the children, but nobody else. Uh, she recognized me, sorry. She recognizes me and the children, but nobody else. She hugs me. She talks to me. She doesn't have any memories of us. But she knows that I am her husband. A few months ago, she said to me, You really love me? And I told her, Yes. It's very touching emotionally because it is hard for me to understand how she was so vibrant and so intelligent and know this. He said, Marshalek, is 90 years old, said that he was in a relationship when he first laid eyes on Edith. I was in University of the United States of America and I was supposed to be engaged to a girl. But she got emotionally sick and she took off to England and left me. It was 1960 and I was heartbroken. About a year before that, I had seen Edith at church. And I was saying to my that she was such a beautiful girl. And I wonder how she wasn't married already. I told myself that if my girl and I broke up, I was going to come back and check on this girl, Edith. And then he laughed. Marshall said that he inquired about Edith's whereabouts and a relative had told him that she was at Oxford University in England now. After hearing that she was coming to New York, he telephoned her and he told her that he would like to correspond with her. For two years, he communicated back and forth through letters. No fun to know about them thing there. Email on no used to, right? They communicated with letters. Letters had to go long, take two weeks for reach. When the letter reached, you have to wait two weeks for your honey boo, reply back to you on these kind of things. It doesn't get boring. In one of the letters, she sent me a picture of herself, and at the time, I was fishing, so I had two other pictures of two other girls. I showed my girl, I showed my friend all three pictures, and them asked me which one I wanted, and I picked one of my present wife. And they told me she was a sweet girl, 
and I ignored the other two girls and I just stuck with her from then. Marshall X said that after completing his degree, he returned to Jamaica for Edith to see him in the flesh and the two dated for about four months before they eventually tied the knot in January 12th of 1964. Four months of dating. But remember, there was also two years of corresponding. My wife was very bright and spiritual. She went to Oxford, and she was a permanent secretary in three ministries. I adored her and still adore her to this day. We didn't have any children until four years after we got married. So we had four years to enjoy each other, right, before getting into the family thing. They have a daughter and a son. Edith is a retired civil servant who served 33 years in public service. She also taught at Kingsway High School for eight years and served as the principal for the Bahamas Academy in Nassau. Marshallick worked for 33 years with the Jamaica Union of Seventh-day Adventists as an accountant. He also served as minister, minister of Andrews Memorial Hospital and lecturer at the Northern Caribbean University, rising to the rank of assistant professor in the business department. Both of us are Adventists, and my wife, she was non-racial. I remember when she was buying teddy bear for the house for decoration, she bought a white one and a black one and a brown one. She's like very humble and kind. She's a great girl and everyone loves her. We left each other to do our own thing. I didn't interfere with her situations on the job and she worked with a lot of top guys and there were times when she would work up to two o'clock in the morning. But we never argued about it, and she was a very faithful woman, and so was I. We were very truthful and faithful to each other, and we have a spiritual connection, Mashalek added. The couple migrated to the United States of America in the 70s, where Edith worked in a private school as a Spanish teacher, while Mashalek worked in the public school system for 26 years. Now that they're both in their 90s, her dementia is picking up and she doesn't even remember him being her husband. She recognizes her children. She recognizes him. She does not recognize anybody else. And she does not remember memories that she has built and shared with him over the years couple of things I'll say before I go. One, when I tell people about scamming and scammers and how they call people and them get through and bingo and all these things, a lot of the times it's people like these that are living on their own. A lot of them, especially in the U.S., they try to live on their own for as long as they can because they dread going into a long-term care facility, right, with all the stuff that goes along with it. So you'll catch them. They'll try to play it off for as long as they can. And when you start to say to them stuff like, but Miss Jones, you realize you forgot, you, you know you have one foot of shoe on, right? You walking down the hall, they'll make an excuse and be like, oh, I know, I do that all the time. I know where the other one is. I was just going to go pick this up real quick before I put it on. When in fact, if you weren't there, she would have been down the street in a one foot of shoe. You know what I'm saying? It is just that that bad. But looking at their story, this is definitely a beauty. Um, sis of fire exactly a beautiful story about true love you notice he said they got married in four months they corresponded by mail for two years she worked in top positions around a lot of top guys he never argued with it even when she came home at two in the morning it was a long day at work I had to work late we have this project going on all right, is I love you same way I'm cook dinner because you didn't, you weren't here to cook it, so you had dinner already. But you're gonna eat dinner at two o'clock in the morning, or you get something to eat already, caring about the person who you plan to go the long distance with. So back to what I started off with this morning and ending it this beautifully by saying, in life, after a certain stage and age, you're no longer looking for round body and stiff titty or if you're a woman i don't think you should be talking about body size and 
stamina and all that. I think what you need to be <laughs> pursuing is friendship and genuine companionship. Somebody who is going to be there, love you, respect you, right? And mutual respect exchange and a deep, genuine spiritual connection that will last, outlast all things. This is everybody's dream. Everybody's dream is to arrive down the road into elderly stage with that person still there. God forbid, not dementia though, right? With your memories still intact where you can look and laugh with each other. Re remember back in that 2024? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, no, you did do it. <laughs> it was funny though, right? Yeah, and share memories. That's where the beauty is, right? Not these tumultuous relationships. You must pay for this and you must do this and you must do that. And if you don't, it's on to the next one and on to the next one. You're going to on to the next one, on to the next one and find yourself alone. And I want to close by saying this. I saw a lady said, I work in the healthcare field and I see these men all the time, ladies. Don't let them fool you. They end up in here lonely. Well, guess what? Me work in there too. Right alongside nurses, doctors, care team, um, uh, therapy team speech pathologists, all the others work right along with them. And I'm in the same facilities and I see it just as equal, right? I've seen many women in these places who have nobody. And when their children come, it's for them to sign a piece of paper because their check just come in for the month and they're going to go cash the check and buy her a couple of things, gone with the rest of the money. They have total control now over the property, the house, and all these things, and they barely visit. So it goes both ways. At the end of the day, I think it should be an individual choice, though, right? Not about what man are doing, what woman are going to do, and how much man end up more than... Because at the end of the day, the only person we have to be accountable for is us, ourselves. That's it. Nobody else. So make sure you're making the right choices in life, my friend, right? Because it's a ride, but it's a short ride, no matter how long you live it. With that said, we'll leave this one right here this morning. Manners and respect to each and every one of you tuning in. No hard feelings. We exchange information. We laugh. We talk. We cuss. We don't cuss. We do all that because we're family, and we go off to have a wonderful day, and we meet again tomorrow. All right? Go with Walk good. Think about your actions because they have consequences and repercussions and reactions. And I'll see you tomorrow. God spare my life right here on Morning Thoughts. I'm out. Peace.